You're walking down the beach toward the water, but something feels different today. The water is bright green, and your nose gets filled with a recognizable pungent stench of rotting eggs. Should you probably come closer to check this unusual phenomenon? Mm -mm. Stop right now until it's too late. What you see is called a harmful algal bloom, also called algae bloom, and approaching it is a very bad idea. This bloom contains algae that can produce dangerous toxic gases. That's what makes previously popular touristy places deserted and outright treacherous. You can come to a sea or lake beach and spot something that looks like blue-green foam floating on or just beneath the surface of the water. Or it may resemble streaks of bright green paint. Some blooms, called red tides, can color the water brown or red. Anyway, once you notice something like that, try to stay away. Keep in check that curiosity of yours and don't go exploring. When algae decompose, pockets of toxic hydrogen sulfide gas are trapped under the crust. If you unknowingly step on such a pocket, you'll set the gas free and can accidentally inhale it. It's enough to say that this is likely to end tragically. On some beaches, bulldozers pile up the algae into dump trucks and bring it to special centers. There, workers dry the seaweed and get rid of it. But sometimes, these centers have to be temporarily closed. Algae mixed with sand and mud smell so awful that local people can't sleep at night because of the stench. There are three types of dangerous algae that can gather into harmful algal blooms – cyanobacteria, dinoflagellates, and diatoms. All of them are made up of minuscule floating life forms that use sunlight to create their own food. The blue-green algal blooms are caused by cyanobacteria. They produce dangerous toxins that destroy nerve tissue. It can get so bad that water treatment plants might be unable to get rid of the toxin. Then, local people are recommended not to use tap water. Dinoflagellates and one diatom species are responsible for creating red tides. They occur mostly in ocean bays. For a red algal bloom to form, the water has to be warm, salty, and rich in nutrients. Such blooms release a huge amount of different toxins. In Texas, red tides used to happen once in a decade. Now they occur every three years. In Florida, red algal blooms appear every year. Long, skinny diatoms can also produce toxic substances harmful to people. Even worse, if some shellfish, like razor clams, eat a lot of this plankton, they become toxic too. That's why cooking them for dinner can lead to a disaster. It's one of the reasons why marine waters are usually monitored. If toxin levels become too high, beaches get closed for shellfish harvesting. Harmful algal blooms can last for several days to a couple of months. They rid the water of oxygen, causing marine life to disappear. But it gets even worse when microbes start to decompose the algae at the end of the bloom. They consume even more oxygen in the process, and no fish can survive it. This creates huge areas of water almost totally devoid of oxygen and any kind of plant or animal life. Harmful algal blooms appear in the regions with too many nutrients in the water. And the most common of these nutrients comes from agriculture and other industries. Plus, winter monsoons have become warmer and now carry more moisture. This allows algae to gather in huge blooms. Some of them get so gigantic that the thick green swirls can be seen from space. Not all algal blooms are harmful, though. Some of them just add a terrible taste to the water, change its color, or produce revolting smells. Unfortunately, you won't be able to tell toxic algae from totally harmless kinds, judging only by their appearance. Algae aren't the only organisms that look deceitfully harmless. Here are other marine inhabitants you should never ever touch. The Arukanji jellyfish, found in Australia, looks tiny and totally innocent. But appearances are deceitful, and this baby, the size of a human thumbnail, is actually lethal. During stinger season, which lasts from November to May, tons of beaches get closed because of these itsy-bitsy creatures. What makes the jellyfish particularly dangerous is their miniature size. You will simply fail to notice one while swimming. Oops. The blue-ringed octopus looks not just harmless, it's breathtakingly beautiful. But don't let the looks fool you. You wouldn't want to disturb this relatively small 8-inch long creature. It carries enough venom to bring down 26 adults within mere minutes. And once the animal feels threatened, well, you can probably guess the outcome. At the same time, when left alone, 
the octopus is absolutely docile. The infamous box jellyfish, named for its cubic body shape, lives in the Indian and Pacific Oceans. Stay clear from a creature with a squarish bell and long, dangling tentacles. And even if you see only a single tentacle, without the jellyfish attached to it, don't come close or touch it. The box jellyfish can grow up to 10 feet, and each of its tentacles has about 500,000 microscopic harpoons to inject venom. Unlike other jellyfish, box jellyfish are hunters. They can latch onto you by wrapping their slender tentacles around your limb or body. With how dangerous their venom is, it won't be a pleasant experience. The crown of thorn starfish got its name because of the venomous spines covering its entire body. The second largest starfish in the world, it can grow up to 20 inches across. They feed on corals, and they eat a lot. Just one hungry starfish can finish off more than 100 square feet of corals within a year. The creatures also tend to have loads of babies. They produce more than 500 million eggs at a time. Really, an overachiever. The fairly small, blue-spotted ribbon tail ray mostly lives in the tropical Indian and Western Pacific Oceans, near coral reefs. No more than 14 inches across, the creature has a striking color pattern. It's yellow, with electric blue spots on its body and several blue stripes on its tail. But however pretty this animal is, keep in mind that it's also dangerous. It can injure you with venomous tail spines. You can come across lionfish in the South Pacific Ocean and in the Caribbean Sea. Despite what most people think, it's okay to cook these fish. These creatures present real danger when they are alive. You can get accidentally stung by their needle-sharp fins that contain venom. If you're an enthusiastic shell collector, you should know the cone snail by sight. About 4 inches long, the snail looks cute and innocent. But this look is deceitful, especially if you're dealing with a tropical species. Imagine finding a pretty shell and picking it up. You aren't afraid, your diving gloves seem to offer perfect protection. But cone snails have tiny needle-like protrusions they can deploy from their mouths, and those are full of lethal neurotoxins. These harpoons can easily get through your diving suit's fabric. But the worst thing is that the venom contains painkillers. You won't even know you've been stung. The flower urchin got to the Guinness Book of Records as the most dangerous sea urchin on the planet. These creatures live in the Indian and Western Pacific Oceans. And while a flower urchin may look like something you'd love to see in your aquarium, never ever touch it. Flower urchins have enough venom to make your holiday extremely unpleasant. Or short. The reef stonefish, the world's most venomous fish, knows how to camouflage. Oh goody. It can blend into the surroundings so well, you won't even notice it even if you're paying attention. This makes it all too easy to step on the fish. Once the creature feels threatened, like when you're accidentally trying to crush it, it extends the venomous spines growing along its back. The more pressure, the more venom the fish produces. The creature remains dangerous even taken out of the water. The Indonesian needlefish isn't venomous, doesn't have sharp teeth, and will most likely stay as far away from you as possible. The danger lies in the fish's body shape. After all, it wasn't called the needle for nothing. Needlefish swim near the surface. In case of danger, they launch themselves out of the water, and their speed can reach 37 miles per hour. Their long, sharp jaws turn the fish into flying spears. The striped surgeon fish got its name because of the spines growing near the base of its tail. When the fish feels in danger, it moves the tail and reveals these scalpel-shaped spines. If you don't hurry to move away, you can get several nasty cuts. Keep in mind that some species are also venomous. Hey, have a nice day at the beach, y'all!